was kind of hesitant to make this video, but then I was like, I've already started sharing about my ADHD journey, so I kind of have to continue. And I do want to because my hesitation comes from fear or it comes from, I guess, a little bit of it's easier just to stay quiet or not to talk about it. But in doing that, I know I'm not actually helping the bigger issue, which is stigma around mental health issues, stigma around ADHD in particular, and medication with ADHD, or just in general, really. So this video is going to be a bit of a continuation on my previous two, talking about the next steps, really, how I plan to manage my ADHD. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jodi and I help you change your beliefs so you can change your body, your health and your life. So since I made my last video, I have learned a lot more about how ADHD and autism shows up in my life. It's just absolutely crazy to me how it literally explains everything and you go on TikToks or YouTube videos and look at the comments and so many other people get it and understand it and it has been really nice to finally feel like I belong somewhere and to feel a bit more understood and to also understand myself better. But at the same time, speaking to friends, I haven't yet told my family, I'm kind of scared to, I don't know why, but I guess the reaction from some friends and people close to me has not been as positive as I thought it would be. So that kind of brings the hesitation to making this video and also talking about it more because at the end of the day, the people that need to get it still don't get it. As much as I'm hesitant, I need to talk about it. I need to be louder about it. I need to explain what it actually is so more people understand because at the end of the day, there are more people getting diagnosed because it is not uncommon. Neurodivergency is a thing. It just hasn't been well understood up until now. That is why more of us are getting diagnosed. And even if you are not neurodivergent yourself, it's very likely you know someone that is. And so it's nice if you can kind of understand it a little bit for that person that you know. The other issue I've had in trying to explain it to people is that they normalize it in that they say, oh, I do that too, or that's totally normal to do that or feel that way. And that might be the case. Like a lot of my symptoms, neurotypicals kind of have on occasion as well, but it's not usually as intense or it doesn't show up as frequently. It doesn't have such a big impact on their life. So about three or four weeks ago now, I went back to my doctor for the third visit. So the first visit was kind of just an assessment. The second visit was a bit more of an assessment as well as giving me the formal diagnosis for autism and ADHD. And then the third visit was to kind of discuss what the next steps would be and how I could go about managing this better. And you might think I've been doing okay managing this up until now, and I kind of have, but at the same time, I haven't. I'm just very good at masking and that isn't deliberate. It's just something I've learned to do because otherwise I get bullied or I get in trouble and I can get away with a lot. I can hide a lot. Again, not deliberately. I hide it from myself half the time because I live by myself. I work for myself and I am quite isolated. So a lot of people don't see when I am at a low point or really struggling. So when it comes to treatment of ADHD, there is treatment out there in the form of medication that works very well, apparently. And I have done a lot of research. I've spoken to my doctor. I have also read through lots of YouTube comments and TikTok comments to see other people's experiences of having medication and how it's changed their life. And so many people have said it is literally life-changing, which I don't fully understand yet, but I am curious. I am very hesitant when it comes to medication in the form of pharmaceuticals because of the side effects. And I am just someone that likes to get to the root cause. For example, if I have a fever, I will run that out. I won't take Panadol or anything else to try and get rid of it because the way I see it is 
that's my immune system working. The fever is my immune system trying to get rid of the pathogen. I've studied pathology and immunology, so I understand what it's doing. And I think taking something to numb the symptom or get rid of the symptom, which is actually just your body trying to heal itself, is not very smart. Of course, if you want to take Panadol, you want to take any medication, like that's your decision, go for it. I have nothing against it. I just like to, again, get to that root cause. However, with this ADHD thing, I kind of can't get to the root cause. Like there's not really anything that is going to fix it because all the natural remedies for it, I'm already doing and I still struggle. So, you know, I'm very active. Exercise is one of the most recommended things for it to help manage it better. I also eat very well. I eat enough protein. I'm not nutrient deficient. So zinc, B vitamins, iron, magnesium, they're all very important in terms of making sure you have the building blocks to help create dopamine, which is what I'm lacking. I've done lots of mindset work. I am very good at pushing myself, being disciplined, talking myself out of things or into things. But at the end of the day, I'm still struggling a lot with my moods, emotional regulation, and fatigue. Another thing I've started doing, I do yoga, I do meditation, I do breath work. That all helps, yes, but it still doesn't really, doesn't really change things for me. Now I am very lucky in that I can kind of manage my workload when I am feeling good and do less when I'm not feeling good. But then I really struggle with feelings of guilt. My inner critic is so loud. And then that ties back to feeling really low and bad about myself and bad about life. And it's really hard to explain how exhausting it is to have a neurodivergent brain unless you actually have one and live with it. And yes, while I've got so far, in my mind, it's like, well, what am I missing? Like, maybe I could be even further ahead. Maybe I could get further. Maybe I have a higher potential to reach. And I'm stopping myself by kind of being closed off to medication. And I was. When I went to the doctor, the first thing I said to him, I was like, I don't know why I'm here because I'm not really interested in medication anyway. But I had had a kind of mini breakdown, I guess. And I guess I was just sick of it because I could see the cycle playing out over and over again starting off really well, energized, feeling on top of the world, doing it all, and then kind of just falling to bits. And this will kind of be like a monthly thing. So I didn't know what else to do at that time. And I guess I was just like, okay, it's not gonna hurt anyone to go and see what this is about and if I actually have it or not. And now I'm in that mindset of, it's not actually going to hurt me to try medication to see if it actually does make a difference to my life. I say this all the time, but you don't know what you don't know, right? And I am very curious to see if it changes my life, like it has for a lot of people. And I think with medication, it's always about weighing up the risk to the reward, right? So what are the side effects? Are they going to be worth it for the potential benefit? And at the moment, honestly, I think it doesn't, again, it's like, it's not going to hurt me really to try. And then once I see what the potential benefit looks like for me and what the side effects actually look like, because they do differ in everyone, then I can make a better decision as to whether it's actually right for me rather than completely dismissing it. I already have those thoughts like, what if I had have known about this years ago? How would my life have been different? So I don't want to have more of those thoughts around what if. What if I'm missing out on something by being stubborn and not just giving it a go? And I've seen all the videos out there about lion's mane and natural products like that. And I spoke to the doctor about it. I'm like, what do you think about this? And he's like, it's not gonna have as big of an impact. It might help you a tiny bit, but it's not really gonna make a night or day difference because it's not as targeted as what these medications are. And so when it's kind of impacting various parts of the body, it's having more of a diluted effect. And you might see other people saying that ADHD comes from trauma and just healing the trauma will help it. I really disagree with that. After looking through all the research and talking to doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist. For me, it's definitely genetic. I can see where it has come from in terms of my parents. And my childhood was really fine. Like, yes, I got bullied, but it wasn't 
super traumatic. Other people will tell you it's due to heavy metal toxicity in the brain and I've looked into this but it doesn't really make sense to me either. It makes sense that I am lacking dopamine, I'm lacking norepinephrine, my brain is just different, I've inherited it and therefore I can't just fix it by detoxing. Now if you have had success doing that, that's great. Leave me a comment, let me know. But at the moment I am trusting my doctor I really, really like him and that takes a lot for me to say because I don't trust a lot of doctors out there. And so I'm going with his recommendation and that is to go see a psychologist, which I have already been to twice now. She's really just been gathering information. I really like her, so we'll see how that goes. And then his other recommendation is to see this psychiatrist and I actually went to see him yesterday. It was a very interesting experience. I don't know what I was expecting to be honest, I guess I wasn't expecting ever to go see a psychiatrist but yeah we did. He was really nice, he was very calm and explained everything to me. I had a million questions of course and I kind of come to the conclusion that it was right for me and he kind of assessed me again but I think he got everything he needed from the referral because he didn't ask me too much. Or otherwise it was my body language and the way I explained things that kind of gave it away. It's funny, some of my clients are neurodivergent as well and I can see this when I'm speaking to them now because of the way they share how they are, what's going on, gym updates and all of that. Anyway, so he prescribed me meds, it was very easy once I got to that point. Getting in to see him was not easy though, I literally only got in because there was a cancellation and I could make this last minute appointment. I know there's huge waiting lists in Australia to see psychiatrists and even my ADHD doctor. But I honestly feel very blessed that it was pointed out to me that I might have ADHD and I've kind of been able to go down this path of rediscovering myself. As much as it's been hard, it has been really nice. And now I'm kind of hopeful to see how my life changes with medication. I'm not going to take it all the time. I am really just going to try it when I am having those really hard days. And that's what the psychiatrist recommended as well. He's like, you probably don't need to take it every day, so don't. Just take it on the days that you feel like it will help you. Yeah, that is how I am going to be managing things. I'll probably do another video update in a month or two to see how I find the medication. Something else I want to add actually about the meds that kind of shifted my perspective a little bit. Someone commented on a video, I don't remember what video, but they were talking about medication and how you wouldn't tell someone who can't see properly not to wear glasses and medication is basically glasses for your brain. I know a lot of you might be surprised to hear that I am going to try meds, but the way I see it, I've got nothing to lose and lots more to gain, so we'll see how I go. And at the end of the day, not really risking anything by trying it, I am risking a lot by not, especially because it's what my doctor and psychiatrist have recommended. Please be nice if you decide to comment on this video but yeah I would love to hear your experience trying meds if you have and otherwise that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it please like it. If you'd like to see more please subscribe and if that's the case I will see you in the next video.